Hey everybody, I'm Jack Reed with Future Pastimes. I'm one of the designers on the Choman Rich S expansion for the classic Dune board game from Gale Force 9, the 2019 edition. This was the second expansion that we did for that. Uh, the third one is Ikazamor Tani. But one of the variants in the Choman Rich S expansion is something called Leader Skills. And these are a set of cards that players are going to draw at the beginning of the game and assign to a specific a leader disc, which they publicly display for everyone. And we're doing a deep dive on individual leader skill cards. And today we're gonna to take a look at the Master of Assassins. So this is another one of the specific treachery card type leader skills. Um, and one of the things that helps you determine if it's going to be a good skill is that there's a little change up in the setup where you're going to do your treachery cards before you do traders. And in between those two steps, you will get your leader skills. So you'll know ahead of time if you have a particular type of treachery card that would go good with your leader skill. And you'll be dealt two skills, so you'll have a little bit of a choice there. So the Master of Assassins, uh, there are two effects. The first effect happens when your leader uh, with the skill is out in front, but is not the leader that you have in battle. So it's going to affect all of your other leaders. And then the second effect, it says specifically, this leader in battle. So the top effect is for your other leaders. Add plus one to your other leader discs when using a poison weapon. So the Master of Assassins, uh, they're experts at using poison to kill uh, the leaders of their rival factions, and uh, because of that, all of your leaders are going to get a plus one, except for this one. Now, this one, if you use this leader, let's say that you have Piter, is your master of assassins, and you have assigned this skill to him, and you want to use Piter in the battle. Um, anytime you're in a battle, you can bring the leader with this skill behind your shield so that the other players don't know whether you're going to play that leader or not. However, if you do bring the leader behind your shield, then this top effect is no longer active, which means if you are doing a little switcheroo and you're going to be playing Beast Raban uh, or somebody else in that battle, they will not get that plus one if you do have a poison weapon. But sometimes you want to do that as a bluff. Maybe you want them to think that you're going to use your poison weapon, you're going to use Piter de Vries, and you're actually going to be using a projectile weapon or you have some other defense that uh, they didn't know that you had. So um, that's why you might want to do that. Uh, but if you do add Piter to the battle plan, you're going to add this to the plan as well. I like to always keep the disc with the skill, with the skill card at all times. And if you use this leader in the battle, it's going to add a plus three to the leader disc uh, when you're using a poison weapon. So that is not an additional, it's just plus three. So Piter would be a six strength leader if that's who it was. Now Fade was your skilled leader with the Master of Assassins and you used a poison weapon. He would be a strength nine leader. And that is only applied to the battle. You don't get to, uh, if you kill that leader, you wouldn't get nine spice. His, his knowledge as a Master of Assassins cannot be rendered down into water. Uh, so you only get the value of the leader disc itself if you kill them in the battle. And of course, if the skilled leader is killed, then the skill no longer applies to that battle. So Fade would not get that plus three. It wouldn't matter because he's dead. Uh, so whoever whoever has that skill. So that's how it works. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and there's a little extra layer of mind games as you are trying to determine if you're going to use that leader or if you want people to think you're using that leader or if you just want people to think that you have a poison weapon. You may not have one. Uh, but by the virtue of the fact that you have chosen this as your skill and you put it out there, you're signaling to the other players that you do have a poison weapon. But sometimes it's just fun to signal. Uh, so they're like, oh, I don't I think I want to get, I don't have a snooper right now, so I don't want to get into a battle with you. And uh, you maybe can leverage that to uh, extort spice from other players to avoid a battle. There's, a, there's another layer on there. There's another layer to the trader selection as well, <clears throat> because you're doing traders after lead, leader skills. So once everyone has chosen which leader disc is going to have the skill, that is all public. It's all out in front of the shields. And then you're choosing traders. So sometimes you maybe don't want to assign a great skill like this to a high-level leader because now they are really attractive as a trader. 
um, if you assign it to a lower strength leader like Piter, for example, uh, and somebody is dealt Piter and Fade, it's a tougher choice for them. Who do they want to have as a trader? And that's a great deal right there if they got both of those leaders. Um, but I think it adds another level of intrigue to the game, which is why I designed it that way. So that's the Master of Assassins. Let me know if you have any questions about this particular skill or leader skills in general. That's it for this one, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.